Hey, it's Ty here. Uh, so, sorry my hair's a little wet. I'm getting ready to go out. It's a Saturday night, but I thought I'd record this. Stumbled on this interesting book, The Power of Others. It was literally in a pile <laughs> in a room that I haven't looked at, uh, haven't been in in a while. And So, you know, you hear this kind of spirit in the world we live in now, like, I don't need other people, don't worry about what other people think of you. I've talked about this before, Matt Lieberman says in the book Social, he's the Harvard professor, he's like, forget it, your brain's hardwired, hardwired for social interaction, you'll never be able to fully overcome things like rejection. So if you're in an environment where people are always laughing at you, you might as well get out of it, you're not going to be able to, I know I'm big on toughening up, but there's some things that uh, in the long run, you can't toughen up. Uh, about you can do it in the short run right but in the long run you got to have to be in an environment where socially you feel you know relatively safe well this book uh the power of others by michael bond it's actually a gold mine of a book i was about to not read it but let me read you something he says here uh there is no doubting the human fondness for groups we categorize people on the flimsiest of pretexts the length of their hair the turn of phrase so they were talking about this experiment Muzaraf Sharif did, a psychologist calls the, called the Robber's Cave. Uh, they basically took two groups of like boy, teenage boys in Oklahoma in a summer camp, and they started uh, really hyping up like your, your group versus their group. And it, it became like one of these Lord of the Flies situations where people are actually like, <laughs> it was almost out of control. Uh, they had created discrimination, not necessarily on traditional things like race, but just like, you're in my group, you're not in my group. I often think of that in basketball. I watch pro basketball games, and you'll see guys get traded from one team to the other. When they were on one team, they were like literally fighting for their team, you know, standing up for his people, and then they switched to another team a day later, and they've like got switched loyalties. You could laugh at that about the human brain, but it's better to understand yourself and be like, this is a cognitive function that I'm not going to be able to overcome fully, but what you can do is use it to your advantage. So, um, you know, he says here, the presence of others can lead us astray because like Freud said in a different book that you guys know I recommend, uh, Civilization is Discontents, Freud talks about how uh, there's like nine strategies humans employ to become happy, right? To move away from pain, to move towards pleasure. And one of those, he says, is uh, uh, since humans cause us so much pain, one strategy used by many people is to withdraw from people, right? That's like the ascetic mode. You see that monks and things like this, not all monks, but for example, some people go, uh, you see this in agriculture, a lot of farmers, they're farmers because they don't want to be around people. Joel Salatin's dad, who was a farmer, used to, to, used to say, the more I learn about people, the more I like my Pekingese dog. So you may be one of those people, you become introverted, not necessarily because that's your natural personality type, but because of environmental stressors, like, uh, like Freud talks about. Well, here, uh, the author says, the presence, presence of others can lead us astray, but their absence can propel us to a far worse place. So if your strategy in terms of people is to really kind of isolate yourself because you feel like the pain of being alone is better than the pain of being around bad people, you know, Bond is basically saying the absence of a good social life it can definitely take you to a far worse place. Crowds, he says, contrary to how they are usually portrayed, tend to be highly cooperative and altruistic. To the extent that the social psychologist John Drury has dubbed them the fourth emergency service. You know, one of the reasons if you study like Dr. David Buss, evolutionary psychology, various, uh, if you just study history, Will Durant, you guys know I'm big on lessons of history and the story of civilization uh, by the Pulitzer Prize winning historian uh, Will Durant. He says, you know, the reason we aggregate in big, large cities, like I'm here in Hollywood, 14 million people right outside my door. Why? Because there's a level of safety, not only physically, where we have a potential, uh, and I'm not saying it's always accurate, big cities aren't always as safe as people say, I think they are, but the reason we t trend towards these large groups is there is some uh, adaptive, positive purpose, okay? 
So, uh, you know, one thing that's fascinating that he says here, uh, he talks about emotional contagions. Now, this is big. Basically, he was talking about when Princess Di died, uh, Princess Diana in, in the UK. Literally, people were hugging each other on the streets that had never met each other and crying and bonding together. That's called emotional contagion, or, or groups affect emotionally other people. And we're going to see in a second why that's so important for you. Uh, listen to this. Four decades of research into how people decide to do what they do has shown that we are highly susceptible to the winds of social influence. Indeed, it is impossible to escape them short of living in hermetic isolation and eat being a hermit. And even that may not immunize us. He's going to talk about that later. Uh, so uh, mimicry is the breadth of social interaction. So once you understand that you are a social creature and it's very hard to get away, whether it's this book, all the research as a human is saying, no matter what you try to do on your brain, you're not going to get away from this. Um, uh, the next step, once you accept that, is understand there will be a level of mimicry, meaning even they they've done research where people eating together uh, coincide. They're, they're, they synchronize the bites of food that they eat. We're hardwired to synchronize. We're hardwired to to mimic each other. So listen to this. Uh, emotional contagion appears to be a natural feature of our social interaction. They noticed that not only happy people were clustered together in a network of other humans meaning they were more likely to be friends with each other, but also that their chances of being happy increased the better connected they were to other happy people. Nicholas Christakis, the social scientist, and James Fowler concluded, most people will not be surprised that people with more friends are happier, A, but what really matters is whether the friends they have are happy. So what I want to leave you with today, just a short message to you, is for you to... Uh, whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, for you to understand the hardwiring of this brain, Jonathan Haidt told me, happiness hypothesis author and NYU professor, we are high creatures. You gotta accept that, you have to cope with that, no matter what pain you had in the past, betrayal of others, all this, uh, all the negatives that come, you have to understand you will mimic, okay, and that people will rub off on you and happy people, the four pillars, of the good life I talk about, health, wealth, love, and happiness. We're talking today about that fourth one. Uh, it comes primarily through those people you're around. You need a volume of friends. I mean, you can't just have one. Dun Robin Dunbar found about 150 acquaintances is the natural. Some, of course, are closer than others, but they must be happy people to get the, if your end goal is happiness. Uh, he says here, for instance, other studies have found, sim have found similar effects in diverse everyday environments. For example, if you're at sharing a living space with someone suffering from mild depression, you're at risk of becoming progressively more depressed the longer you live with them. You pick up their negative vibes. Talks about, goes on further. I would recommend you pick up this book, The Power of Others. I'll have it listed on my recommended books. Get on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Uh, talks about even, you know, Tony Robbins is big on this, changing your state. Like, actually, if you force yourself to smile, there is scientific proof. It will have some effect on you, although it says genuine happiness, you know, it, it is better than just faking it. So, point, remember this. Focus on your social circle. It's the key to the fourth pillar of life, happiness. You need that social circle. If you are even rooming, roommating with, stuck around a co-worker, an employee, a friend who's depressed, it's going to rub off on you. Some people don't like that. To me, it's freeing. I believe rules are freeing, man. When I got on an airplane down to LAX, I went to Vegas the other day. I'm like, I'm glad there are rules of physics that I can count on to get on this plane and not hit the ground and crash. In the same way, socially, there are rules. There are rules to happiness. You might not like them, but like the Amish I learned when I lived there for two and a half years. They believe in something called galassenheit. Bowing your knee, bending your knee to something bigger than you. In this case, whether you're an atheist or religious, the hardwiring of your brain is put there. You might see that as pure science, or you might see that uh, spiritually or in a religious manner, you know, the hardwiring of your brain, or you might be pure science. Either way, you end up with the same conclusion. You need people, you need a relatively good large group, and the healthier they are, happier they are, the less depressed they are, 
the more likely you are. No one is an island. No man, no woman is an island. If you've gotten into your mind, you know, this mistaken thought that you're going to be able to do it on your own, like I said, I'm big on toughening up, but you will not be able to toughen up fully to completely change the DNA uh, and the hardwiring genetically of your brain. So it's Saturday night. I'm going out with friends. Make sure you do the same. Do some fun things. Go to comedy clubs. Go see a funny movie. Don't be afraid to get out there. I'm going to be talking more about this social thing. People consider me a social person and ask me a lot how I do it. I'm going to share some of those tricks. Leave me a comment here. Here's my question to you. What lie do you have in your head uh, about how important social is? So right there, you know, I have believed that I could do it without people or, you know, maybe you don't have any lies. And what you're going to do to change that? Maybe it's a friend you need to let go, spend less time with. Maybe it's new friends you need to make. Leave me a comment here. Thanks so much. Post it on your Facebook wall if this was helpful to you. By the way, check out tylopez.com. I'm going to be doing book reviews. I do a book, read a book a day and write an email newsletter. It's free. It's one of the largest ones in the world now, I think. 1.4 million people. So if you would join, it's absolutely free. tylopez.com. Enter your email and you'll get more like these. Stay tuned. I'm going to try to do these uh, videos almost every day. So hope it's been helpful. Signing off for a Saturday night.